We all know TypeScript isn't perfect. I use it every day, and there's a lot of things that happen in this language that just make me go, what the f***? And I'm excited to show you all, and I'm curious if you've seen this too. And if there's other things you've seen, please share them in the comments. So let's take a look. All right, so the first example we're gonna take a look at is simply a filter function for an array. So this array has a one, an undefined, a two, and we're gonna do this little cool little trick called filter boolean. All this is just fancy speak to just say, hey, remove all the falsy values. So in this case, the only falsy value is undefined. So you can imagine if we filter out all the falsy values, we're gonna be left with one and two, right? So it's just an array of numbers. However, we get this type of number or undefined or a union type rather of number and undefined, which is like super annoying because we know at runtime, we're definitely gonna get one and two, okay? So there's a couple of ways to work around this. Some people use flat map, um, there's another library that people use by Matt Pocock, which I mentioned in previous videos um, called TS Reset. Or you can do type cards, which is just like another super annoying way to get around this, but it's it's fairly common. So you can just say num. Um, we'll just say num is number, and we'll just say num. Cool. So if you look at this type, we get a number array. But wouldn't, wouldn't it just be nice, like, if we could just get the correct type inferred. So this is like one of my frustrations. It's okay, it is what it is. Um, and we learned to deal. So that's the first one. All right, here's the next uh, the next kind of WTF moment that I just learned about not that long ago. So there's these utility types that are built into TypeScript. So in this case, we're using capitalized, uppercase and lowercase. And as you can imagine, they do exactly what they say. So let me just illustrate one of them for you real quick, just so you believe me. I will let Copilot do its thing. And we say we passed uh, hello to capitalize and we get a type with capital H hello, right? So that all makes sense. Where this gets crazy is where you actually pass capitalize the type string instead of like this literal type here. So check this out. So, and this is like something I'm probably gonna start using cause it's just, it's kind of hacky, but it's pretty interesting. So here we're gonna say foo is of type um, capital. So let's just say const foo is of type capital. And we don't get a type error because foo starts with a capital letter, right? But if we make it lowercase, it breaks, right? And if we uppercase it again, it goes away. And as you would expect, it does the same thing for all these other ones. So we can, so let's just do is uppercase and let's just make these all uppercase letters. Boom, it passes. And if I just happen to lowercase one, it fails and then to no surprise, let's do baz and let's just say it is lowercase, right? It fails because, uh, let's, let's get rid of this type error here. So if we make these all uppercase, fails because they're not lowercase. Now if I make them all lowercase, boom. This is pretty crazy. I've solved this kind of problem using a completely different way because this just shouldn't exist. This is like, I don't even know what it is, but it's just like some glitch in the matrix in TypeScript that makes this work. If someone can explain this to me, please do. Shout out to um, David from Archetype that showed this to me on Twitter. This is crazy. Another one that really kind of annoys me is dealing with like any of these methods that exist um, on object. So for one instance, we can just use object.keys. So if you're not familiar with object.keys, all it's gonna do is basically take some object and return it its keys, in this instance, A and B, and return them as an array with just A and B, right? So as you can see here, we're using object.keys. We're gonna pass in that object I just showed you that has a key of A with value one and a key of B with value one as well. So what happens is it's gonna give us this array of A and B, and we're literally just gonna start for looping through those keys, right? Because we stuck them in an array. And then we're gonna access the object we passed in with that key. However, that just doesn't work out of the box because TypeScript just wants to be at a pain in the butt. There's some more intricate reasons on why this is the case. It's just something that happens here that's just super, super annoying. Cause you can imagine, we don't even imagine, like we pass it an object. If you see a key, you, you should know that that key exists for the most part, right? So how do we usually get around this? There's, there's two ways. I typically just cast it because I'm just pretty frustrated with this, uh, with this thing in general, but to be honest, I don't use like object keys too, too often, but you know, when, when I do hit it, I will use it. So here we'll just say, we're just gonna cast key to key of type of some object. So let me actually just like extract that out. Um, just so like 
you can actually see what this looks like. So this becomes a union type of A and B, right? So it knows that this key is gonna be A and B, and it knows that A and B exist in this object. So it doesn't, it doesn't freak out, right? You can be a little bit more clever and you can build your own function that just uses generics, right? So in this case, you can see that we're just gonna make a, an object.keys here, right? An object.keys is just going to extract the, well, it's gonna extract the type of what we pass in. So this object, T, we're gonna store in the T, and then we just verify that it is an object, right? And then what we're gonna say is, this object keys is going to return an array of the keys that exist in T, right? So in this case, that would look like something like A and B. So if we actually just look at the type definition, we see A, B here, right? So it's actually returning A and B in an array. So then when we pass it into here, into the for each, we know that it's key A or B, so it doesn't cry and lets us get away with it. But you can just see like how, just what you have to do to kind of like make these things work. You can either cast it or make your own um, function that will use generics, right? So for someone that's like not really familiar with TypeScript, you can, this would probably shock you and you're gonna be like super confused and you'll probably just like cast it to whatever you can or just bang your head against the wall. Um, but this is one thing for me that I just find like pretty annoying. So there's this thing called distributive conditional types. We'll just read the sentence right here. And all this means is when conditional types act on a generic type, they become distributive, distributive when given a union type. So what does that mean? So let's take a look. So let's just assume we have type bar uh, and it's a union type of string or number. And let's just say we want to just convert each member of this union to an array. So how would we do that? Uh, first, we have this type helper, helper that will take a generic, and this generic can be anything. The important part here is this is how we convert it to an array. So if we look at the type here, so let's just say we passed a type bar to this helper we have here, the result is going to be a union type, which is an array of strings or an array of numbers. Now we can do something really weird and not intuitive to actually stop this behavior. Um, so we can stop, uh, we can basically negate this distributed behavior by wrapping the generic in a bracket and wrapping whatever's on the end of extends in a bracket. Like already it's kind of like, what? what is this? This is just not intuitive at all. It is what it is, to be honest, at least for me at least. Um, so what's the result here when you wrap it in those brackets? Now it's no, longer, it's no longer going to distribute to each member of the union type. It's now just going to say, hey, this array can actually be either string and numbers. It can be either one versus it being exclusive here. It's not very intuitive at all. So let me show you another example on how you can actually cause distribution to happen. And this one's gonna kind of blow your mind. Let's kind of ignore what this type is because this part, this thing is just probably just gonna confuse you even, even more. So I'll just close that for now. Let's just say we wanna pass a union type here, in this case, three, four, and five, and we wanna create tuples um, of that length. So if you look at this one, we're gonna fill it with trash. So you can see we have a unit type of three, four, and five. We have a tuple of three items of trash. We have another tuple with four items of trash. And we have another tuple of five items of trash, right? So that's the, dis that's, that's the distributive behavior that we're seeing on the generic, right? You see that? It's, it's going through three, four, and five. Now, Check this out. This is what's actually causing that to happen. It's n extends n, basically the generic extending itself, which honestly is not intuitive. And you really only know about this stuff unless like you encounter it. So let's see, let's see what happens if we actually remove this nonsense here. And we're just gonna say this tuple me type helper, I want you to just do the exact same thing I showed you and let's see, see if it works out. It's actually not. Now we see we just have three items of, tr of trash because it's no longer distributing across the union type. It just sees three and it doesn't even go any further, right? So if we bring it back, we want we actually want three tuples of three, four, and five or length three, four, and five. And that's how you make that happen. And if you're just curious what this is, this is just basically saying, hey, give me some length 
and I'm going to use the accumulator. And when the accumulator match or the length of my accumulator matches the number I passed in. So, so for example, if I pass in three, I want it to short circuit once the length of this array is three, right? And then once those match, go back and we return it. And that's how that happens. Again, that's not very too important. That's not very important to this, what I'm trying to show you. What I'm trying to show you is like, what, what is this? Like, why does this work? I'm sure someone smarter than me can explain it. I just know that when things aren't distributing, I can force it with something like this. There's a couple other use cases to make to force distribution. Um, I'm not gonna go over those here, but here's just like some, some wacko, or here's a wacky example to kind of explain that. Crazy, right? All right, I got another one that's pretty WTF. So let's just do type WTF in the spirit of this uh, YouTube video. And let's just say trash or I don't know. This is what Copilot wants to give me. That's fine, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but yeah. And let's do this, right? Now we can say const WTF, WTF, right? So the cool thing here is look at the autocomplete. We get autocomplete for trash, WTF, WTH, and what? But we can also put any string we want. Isn't that wild? So the cool thing is we get the autocomplete of like, I guess, potential recommended values. Um, but at the same time, we can enter any string and it's valid. So that's pretty cool. Um, this actually works with numbers as well. So you can actually do like one and then you can say number and then that object, if I could type. So now you can say one, right? Or whatever number I want. Yeah, weird, right? Um, I could try to explain it to you, but I kind of just be regurgitating the words of people smarter than me. But even then, I think everyone kind of chalked this up to like some weird quirk in the compiler and we all kind of just figured it out and now we just use it. All right, here's another thing that happens in TypeScript that kind of works me. And I'm gonna show kind of two flavors of this. Um, and it just kind of deals with like excess property checks. So let's just assume we have my object and foo or bar exist, right, on this object. It only has two keys or two properties. Now, if let's just say I have some const a and we assign it this type, if we do foo and bar, it works, it works perfectly fine. So let's remove that, no type errors. But if we add an extra field, we know that it's invalid, we actually get this type error, right? What we would expect. Now there's a lot of cases where we kind of want to dynamically construct these objects. So let's just assume we just have some Boolean here. So it's gonna be the same thing, my object, which is foo or bar, and it will include foo, because we know that's part of it. But let's just say we want to conditionally add some fields. So let's assume in the, in the scenario where some condition is true, we'll add bar to, because type number, that's perfectly fine. It's also optional. But we want to add this um, extra field. You can see that we don't get any type checking here and there's no, no error. So what happens is, in the true condition, or in the branch that this is true, we're actually going to act spread this invalid value here. And now we just have, and we have no idea. There's nothing telling us. So that's kind of like doo-doo, right? Um, to take this even further, let's, let's show you a different example. And also, yes, there is Vim mode in TypeScript Playground, which I didn't even know about until not, not that long ago. Now it's like my saving grace. Okay, so here's another weird thing. So let me just uh, go ahead and remove all this nonsense here. Let's do, all right, it, tur it turns out it's pretty buggy. So maybe maybe you shouldn't use Vim mode. It actually is not that great. So we have a function that takes an argument of type trash. And the only thing in type trash is a property of its trash is trash and it's a Boolean, right? So you can see in this case, we don't get any type errors even though we're including an extra field. TypeScript is structurally typed. So as long as it has the same structure or the minimum requirements to fulfill the structure, meaning it has this trash, this trash, it doesn't even, it, it's gonna work, right? However, in this case, it shouldn't really work though, right? Because we have an extra property. So it doesn't really match, but at least that it matches the minimum requirements. So we're not gonna get the type error here. However, if we pass an ob actual like literal object straight up versus like storing it in a variable first. So let's just do this, is trash is false. And let's add more things too. 
we're going to get a type error here because it's actually going to do um, excess property checks here. So you can see more things does not exist in type trash. But like, just let me do it here too. Like, come on, what's up with that? So that ends my list of WTF moments in TypeScript. I know there's a lot more. So if you have any you would like to share, please put them in the comments below or join the Discord or even share them with me on Twitter. And as always, please like and subscribe. It seriously helps the channel. I've been loving all the support I've been receiving lately. And I love doing these types of videos for you. And you know, I hope you come back for more. All right, trash out.